I'm here to talk to you today about the Graham Bank Typological Resource and how its advances can help to support research in computational linguistics that covers diverse languages of the world. It's widely recognized in natural language processing and, and computational linguistics more generally that research attention varies across languages, with just a handful of the languages of the world receiving most of the attention and having most of these resources. The rest of the thousands of languages of the world, then, have fewer resources to draw on, and typological information is one type of resource that can be used to extend the reach of language technologies to these less studied languages. That means that typological information is potentially useful for natural language processing, including things like transfer learning and multilingual models. We're pleased to talk today about GramBank, a resource that is designed to improve the coverage of comparative morphosyntactic information across the world's languages. GramBank represents typological information in ways that aim to be user-friendly for a variety of purposes, including, importantly, computational linguistic purposes. GramBank is part of the Glottobank Consortium, which is building a set of cross-linguistic resources that use the CLDF, or Cross-Linguistic Data Format Standards, to increase the interoperability of these data sets. GramBank builds on the legacies of earlier typological resources, such as the World Atlas of Language Structures, in many ways, and it aims to advance the state of the art that was set by that resource in typological data resources. GramBank is comprised of 195 features that cover a similar range of morphosyntactic phenomena to what are encoded in walls. A primary difference is in the encoding of these features. Except for six word order features, the features in GramBank are all phrased as yes or no questions. The resulting binary encoding of data allows us to encode all strategies for expressing a particular grammatical function for which we find evidence, rather than impressionistically in choosing a single dominant strategy. It also helps us to avoid binning our data or using categories that are difficult to interpret for a non-specialist. We also distinguish between features that are concluded to be absent based on the evidence we find, features that have insufficient information or clarity to make a determination, and features that we haven't made an attempt to code in a particular language. The structure of this data set, then, is a flat list of questions with no nested features that rely on the values of higher order features to be interpreted or coded. GramBank 1.0 includes 2,430 different languages that are drawn from 215 different language families and include over 100 language isolates. As you can see from the map here, these languages are drawn from all of the populated regions of the globe. Whereas many of the resources that exist in linguistics are biased towards languages of Eurasia, only about 20% of the Grand Bank data comes from Eurasian languages. This may look similar to the coverage of a data set like WALLS, but when we think about the actual amount of data in these resources, the 400,000 plus data points in Grand Bank 1.0 lead to a higher completion of data and a larger data set than WALLS. If we think about this in terms of completion rates, only 17% of the potential data points in WALLS have values, whereas GramBank pushes that completion rate over 70%. For an individual language, then, on average, WALLS will have 30 features available, whereas the average language in GramBank will be coded for approximately 145 features. We've made several decisions to try to make GramBank usable to a wide range of researchers. One of these decisions is to reduce the redundancy of data that's encoded fundamentally in our data set. We aim, then, to make it easier to avoid violating assumptions of data independence or to introduce biases through these redundancies or logical dependencies between features. But this also makes it easier for users to use the data without a lot of data cleaning. We also aim to make our data transparent by documenting on a publicly available wiki our step-by-step -step operationalization of annotation procedures, examples of our feature values in actual languages, and references to related linguistic literature that helps to inform our perspective on the linguistic phenomena that we include in our data set. GramBank is a project that's been enabled by the efforts of a large team of scientists, including dozens of linguistic typologists and language specialists. It builds on the strengths of prior typological resources, but we've learned lessons from the usage of those prior resources over the intervening decades. And we are trying to learn from those lessons in advancing GramBank and making it a more user-friendly and data-rich resource. To the extent that typological resources are important for multilingual NLP and for the development of technologies for less resourced languages, these advances that GramBank makes should help to enable that work. Thank you.